Welcome to the CESS meeting. Today is May 11th of 2022, and we have added a topic to the agenda of discussing um, how to determine whether a promise is a native promise without consulting its API, uh, even if accidentally. This is something that Matthew brought up, I believe, as an issue on TC39 and has had quite a bit of discussion in Matrix over the last couple of days or day. Um, and uh, so we're going to start with that. And then there's a follow-up topic about uh, that Matthew brings up with, and hopes to discuss with Carity, uh, provided that um, provided that turns out to be a good topic for today, uh, regarding um, errors thrown from Shadow Realms. So let's kick it off with uh, the, let, let's title the topic Promise is Promise, which I realize is a mistake because it's a framing a question in certain terms of its answer. Um, but uh, before so we started talking, Mark raised the issue of why is Promise Resolve not satisfactory? Um, should I go? Um, I mean, I, I think I think uh, the problem is that promise re uh, resolve is not uh, satisfactory. Um, the reason is promise resolve doesn't does a lot of things, and when it finds um, the first thing it does is actually a branch check for a promise, and if it finds a promise, it goes on and does a couple of things. Uh, it checks for the constructor property of the promise. And it also uh, checks the, um, it also does a get of the then uh, of uh, that promise object. Uh, those two things can be uh, controlled by user code. That means calling promise resolve X okay. may um, trigger uh, code controlled by the user and in effect uh, cause synchronous execution uh, which may end up in some reentrancy. Uh, if so, if you want to guard against wait, 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 wait. Okay. The it, how does it cause synchronous reentrancy? I mean, it causes it causes synchronous execution, so that code is free to do anything uh, at that point. How what's what's the synchronous execution? The getter for then and the getter for uh, constructor. That happens during the call to promise resolve. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, I think I, I, I agree with the in principle and in problem resolve also is heavy. But when you just want to know if something is a promise, you ended up creating a promise yep. for things that are not promised, which is not, not nice. But historically, we have. We have a struggle to to do anything with uh, anything like this, which is similar to array. Uh, array is array or something like that. Right. Um, let me let me so, tell you my, my my why I'm confused about. First of all, I'll get back to the array is array because that implies another um, thing we need to pay attention to. But uh, with regard to um, promise dot resolve. The model that was in my head that I didn't have a, apparently is a misunderstanding is that we do the brand check synchronously. And then if the brand check fails, then we postpone everything else to a separate term. If it fails, but if it succeeds, it goes on to synchronously uh, do a species check and a um... And, and grab the, the then function. So if you have a native promise that has- Wait, 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 wait. If you, if a promise dot was, if the branch check succeeds, it should not use the native, the, the, it should not use the then method. It does. For what? That is the, the way specs is written. It, 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 if you have an overridden then, it will use it. Promise dot resolve will? Yes. We, we can probably just look at the spec and see it there. Okay. I, I, I have looked over it many, many times over the last few days. Um, will await use an overridden then? 
awaits. Um, I need to look again. A wait was patched to uh, fast track. I think it does a check of the den and fast fast does a fast path if it's the uh, original one. Uh, but, but it does, it does a get number does check one. anyway, yeah. Um, okay. This is another so, case of subclassing was a mistake. Okay. Oh, 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 but no, no matter what, both then uh, doesn't do um, dot then also does a uh, species check with a dot constructor, no matter what. Dot then does, but dot then the oh, oh, and, oh, 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 and oh, resolve oh. does both. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. So the only safe way to handle uh, this case is to do promise dot resolve nothing dot then and then return uh, uh, have a thunk that returns the the possibly thenable and the only case where it's safe to do promise dot resolve x is if x is not an object anything else you risk triggering uh, a trap on the on the object because at that point it might be uh, it might also be a proxy so okay so uh, I need to really I we need to, we should take a look at the spec on promise resolve because this is, it sounds like promise resolve desperately needs to be fixed. Um, uh, independent of whether we have an, a promise is promise or not. Um, happy, the, happy. Share my screen. Yeah. Okay. So it does its promise, which is a brand check. Uh, and then it gets the constructor. Um, if it's the same constructor F as what promise resolve is attached onto, uh, it just returns the, the promise as is. I'm sorry, ho hold on, I'm, I'm still. So I have to, okay, I'm, draw, I'm drawing Zoom a second time so I yep. can see the screen, I wasn't watching. Okay, now, now I see your screen. So promise resolve, uh, if it's a promise, does a constructor brand check synchronously. Okay, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. I see. It's same value. I see. Where C is the class that is the receiver of the. Okay. Ah. And then the resolve uh, functions once you adopt a promise. Uh, where is this again? Um, where, where are the resolve functions again? <laughs> Every time I lose them. Um, uh, where is this being called? This is where, there we go. Okay. Um, so the resolve functions will uh, end up, so this might end up being called synchronously as well uh, during a then and uh, it basically does a get of the den. So whenever you call, um, whenever you call a resolve uh, at the place where you call resolve. So it's, it, for example, you have a new promise and you get uh, the executor, you get the uh, result from that. You call anywhere resolve during your, um, uh, your executor block uh, synchronously once you call when where you call resolved the thing you call resolve on if it's an object it um, we will do a, a get uh, then wait on the resolution right are you uh, that is the that's the that's the else <clears throat> on not a promise. That is if you resolve um, to any objects. Where does resolution come from? Oh, called with argument resolution. I see it's in the sentence above the step. Okay. Is, is, 
So there is there is basically um, it, it will trigger the got, uh, the code as well there synchronously. That is more that is potentially more expected. This is only really a problem of um, synchronous. <laughs> if, if you create, the only way this is really visible to user code is if you create a promise using a new promise uh, and, and extract its resolve function. Uh, Are, where is the check that that resolution is a promise? It's not. It's only, it only checks for a denable. It doesn't care if it's a promise or not. Promise, this is the... Matthew, maybe you can go, go back to whoever calls these. Promise resolve functions is uh, the, it's literally uh, the resolve of, um, of the, the promise constructor. Oh, okay, okay, I see. It's the resolve and reject functions yeah. that get passed into the executor, okay. Yeah, but it it is internally used also, um, for example, um, at the end of a den uh, to, um, to resolve the, the current promise uh, with. So if you, return, okay. if you return a value from a den block, this is what will be called to uh, resolve the current promise that was okay. created by then. Okay. And this, so this not caring if it's a promise, it just treats it as a thenable. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Now, what's the relationship between these and promise.resolve? Are they just two different things? Uh, promise that resolve will end up calling this um, uh, if it's not a promise, uh, native promise. As okay. I, that's what I'm saying. The else, the else aspect of it is this calling this. So okay. and and that and that and it calls this synchronously. Uh, if it's not a promise object, I believe so. Um, let's go back. Promise resolve, um, it will call, it creates a new promise capability and then creates resolve um, with whatever value was given synchronously. So either way, okay. either get on a constructor or get on the den. Right. So, so, so let's go back to one of the questions that I think was not on one of these calls, but was internal to Agora, uh, or you know, was on the internal Agora chat. Mm -hmm. um, so Agora, so um, uh, uh, our library, um, you know, Endo has an e dot when, and e dot when uh, is as well as uh, the um, uh, just invoking through e, uh, but e dot when is supposed to do a full protection from synchronous re-entrancy. Uh, if I understand what we just talked about, it does not. It it and it not only does it not, but with the current language, it cannot. Is that correct? Uh, it can. It has to delay by a turn if it finds an object. I see. I see. Well, if it, it can't even check if it's a promise. It can check if it's a promise. If it, it can do a type of if it's an object. And if it's an object, it has to delay by a turn just to be safe. So, um, so, so it can't it can't detect it. It cannot detect whether the object is a promise without. There is no way to do a branch check on a promise that doesn't trigger anything else. So, if you look at the spec anywhere where is promise, uh, it, it it's, there's only two places where is promise is uh, used the branch check. Uh, promise resolve, which we define uh, triggers a uh, constructor okay. uh, trap, Done. and promise then, which uh, also does a constructor um, uh, trap. Okay, and, uh, so I suppose, well, this really sucks, uh, which is, I suppose, the point. Um, 
Yeah, which is why I was trying to see if we could have a clean brand check uh, in the spec with it, so that we wouldn't have to incur a hit um, for um, for native promises. Okay, so let me. I the short story is that for now we must postpone. Right now, if you find an object, you you can get away with uh, with a primitive and uh, doing a promise to resolve with the primitive. But if you find yeah, an object, you don't know what that will do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so if it's a native promise, we have to add a tick. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So. So I, th I think promise dot is promise it, uh, has a strong case for it, from what you said. I accept that. The, um, the pushback we're getting right now on promise dot is promise is that most people don't care about that. What they should care about is uh, whether something is attainable or not eventually, and uh, it's right for abuse of people uh, potentially do conditional awaits, uh, which is an anti-pattern and. Um, so basically having anything that lets people think they can conditionally await uh, a value uh, it will get strong pushback. Okay, that's a, that's a, I, it didn't even I, occur to me and that I think well, is, I, a, is a decent objection. It is a very good objection. I, I actually would, would counter that though because um, all of this, all of this stems from promises A plus, which is very explicit about the um, the then property being retrieved only once. Mm -hmm. So just checking checking if something is thenable, not even promise, um, requires holding on to the then method and then that being the thing that you invoke. Right. So well, any prior any prior test that reads the then has already invalidated. Um, from a promises a plus perspective, use of the object as a venable. Yeah, but that an argument could be made that one test is done by user code and the other one is done by uh, the engine. And the engine can't really be responsible for brand checks that the user code does. The um, yeah. let, 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 let's try to separate um, reasons why one would care what promise A plus says. You know, one one the the two that I can think of um, without having seen you know this this online argument, the two that I could think of are um, that promise A plus. Uh, specified something a particular way for a good reason. And before changing our minds on that, we should understand the reason and at least change our minds in an informed manner. Uh, and it sounds like this fetching then once might be one of those. The other reason why I could imagine somebody might care would be a compatibility argument. But at this point, the compatibility argument, I think clearly goes in the other direction. There's orders of magnitude more use of platform promises than there is of A plus. Um, so if something has to change to bring things back into alignment, um, it, it's got to be A plus that changes. So is 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 there another reason, or is it the first one that that A plus did the did something for a good reason, and we should respect that? No, no, A plus is actually. Um... I don't believe A plus says anything here about this. Not not for the testing, but the um, it, it specifies what happens. It, it's basically a specification of the then method, um, more than anything else. And it they they do these caching reads. So the result um, better. Um, yeah. Right. So, so is actually the promise adopted state? It doesn't say how you adopted the state. Uh, it just says adopted state. And then, okay. so technically, you can recognize your own promise in any way that doesn't trigger anything and just adopt it. 
Right, and yes. there's only what there's only one way that doesn't trigger anything, which is uh, you just you know the the internal state that's accessed you know directly without triggering user code mm -hmm. uh, is the thing that you're adopting. So it's, it's basically you know it's basically there is no interleaving with user code in step two point three point two here. Um, we're, we're, I read that as the, there's a colon at the end of two point three point two. And the three sub bullet points are the definition of what it means to adopt its state. It does it say that? Okay, so so the three un, the three points underneath, uh, again, I would say none of that implies interleaving with user code. Right. Right. Uh, but to um, but at the next step, where it's not recognized as a promise, but it is you know, an object, then retrieve then, test okay. it if it's a function, and if so, call it immediately. Call it immediately. I thought we I thought that was fixed already in promise A plus. No. Did we only fix that in committee? Um the delay for um yeah. calling then uh, was only fixed in committee, it wasn't fixed in promise A plus. Wow. Wow. Uh, and it's wow. actually technically, technically promise A plus, uh, uh, native promises are not compliant with promise A plus already because of that. And that's how, that's what actually what triggered the whole discussion originally. Um, the original discussion uh, that uh, Justin, I believe, brought up um, was that it takes too many ticks currently for uh, adopting a native promise and the uh, solution is actually to do a proper recognizing of your own promise and adopt them without uh, scheduling a dot then uh, at a later turn. Wait, that wait, you said, you said adopting a native promise? Where in the current spec that we were looking at in your other tab? So in the Where is the extra, extra spec for a native, the extra, the extra tick for a native promise? Um, the extra tick for, and I lost. I why can I never find the promise result? <laughs> um, uh, where is the promise result functions? Um, job here. Cool. Um, in the result functions, um, currently it does schedule. Uh, the then even if you recognize it as a native, I mean we don't. It doesn't. No, this is this is the, this is the resolve function. Right. Adoption is going through the resolve steps. So uh, it doesn't care currently if it's a native promise oh. or not, and oh. uh, the direction would be to test if it's a native promise. Um, still do a get of the then, uh, and if it matches the um, uh, the primordial uh, then, uh, it would uh, bypass the scheduling and just uh, call the dot then, the internal dot then, because we know the dot then uh, of the spec doesn't have uh, side effects. Could you go to the um, the 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 spec for await? Um, yes. Yeah. It calls promise resolve. Okay, it does call promise resolve. Mm -hmm. First thing it does. Huh. I find this very unsurprising. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's altogether, I find it, I mean, that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, I would have been horrified if it did not call promise resolve. But now that we understand promise resolve, uh, the, my surprise is that await. Yeah, await also synchronously uh, triggers uh, asynchronous code in the before the uh, the suspension. So, so and and if I saw if I if I remember what I saw in promise resolve, if then is overridden. Uh, constructor in this case. 
Well, if no, if then is overridden, if what happens? Is, if then is overridden, then doesn't uh, promise resolve just returns uh, the promise if it's a native promise? Wasn't there something about if if there's a, where did I see a get then and compare it to... in, in the resolve steps? Okay. So if I'm if I'm not if I'm reading this correctly, if you were to subclass promise, mm -hmm. um, it would not be treated as a native promise. It would be treated as subclass uh, is a native promise. I'm sorry. Subclass is a native promise. I, it, it is, but it doesn't have a constructor that's the same as the original constructor. Ah, it doesn't have. So yeah, it makes it into a uh, base promise. That that is another. Uh, that's another thing I'm trying to figure out how to possibly change, but let's not get there today. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, well, uh, getting so, to so there's a there is a few places in the spec that uh, forces any promise subclass uh, into a base promise. Uh, okay. Await uh, is one of those, um, and there's await, and there is uh, also the. Uh, uh, async from sync iterators that does that and then something else okay so uh, the case of await with, with that mm -hmm. don't move the screen here i want to be looking at prom ah sorry you move the screen sorry. okay <laughs> um the uh uh so await <laughs> calls this internal promise resolve function mm -hmm. with with capital c being the original promise constructor correct okay so if it's if it's the original uh, promise constructor, it just returns the promise. If it's a derived promise, it will uh, adopt the promise in, into uh, an original promise. And even, adopt, even if, ad even adopt, if using, adopt using the venable, treating it as a venable? Adopt using uh, the resolve step, which currently uh, use the venable mechanism only uh, and doesn't care about uh, the fact what? that it's an original promise. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, good. This uh, I, at least I now understand. I'm a little bit shocked, um, but uh, I understand, and uh, I also understand that a lot of this at this point cannot be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that okay, there wasn't there discussion in committee about changing a weight to short circuit something so that it would be faster. It does. Um, where is this? So if it's an original promise, um, where does it do this? Uh, well, I don't know where it does this. It's 2050, I think. This is... Um, this is what was chained for this. So it does promise resolve, but it's right. So instead of always creating a promise, it was calling promise resolve and promise resolve uh, short circuits if it's an original promise. Wait, wait, this is, this PR shows as merged and yep. the spec we were looking at did not, was not this. Yeah, it does. It is the promise resolve. Before it used to always create a promise and resolve it with a value. Now it can promise resolve short circuits, right? If it's, but it there is no same value check, which uh, I thought there uh, were. Interesting. So the dot then is not called in a wait, only constructor. Um, okay. Go back to a wait. What is done with this stem promise? Oh, it does do a perform uh, promise then. So yeah, it will. Uh, it will call dot then here. It will call. Uh, no, never mind. Perform promise then is something else. Perform promise then is the internal original. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So 
this will adopt without triggering a den even if it's overridden. So if there is a own den on an await, it will not trigger. Interesting. Pardon me while I marvel that Promise has gotten to the spec at all. Yeah, it's, yeah. It just that... feels so strange <laughs> to have worked on this and had to actually get this far. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really a miracle that it got into ES6. Uh, even the people proposing it um, were mostly just, you know, assumed it would only get into ES7, as you would have called it at the time, at earliest. Uh, and then when the committee kind of suddenly realized, you know, we could just put this in ES6, uh, it was kind of a big shock. I mean, it well, was right, because it was, it, that was motivated by import. Oh, right, 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 right. You're, you're correct. They wanted to get, they wanted to use promises in the dynamic import API, which forced the issue. That's right. Yeah. Oh, in any case, continue. Um. This is it's like I'm this, very, this right now. This is this is obviously surprising and undesirable, <laughs> but yeah, I, in, in the grand scheme of things, something bad did have to happen to make this possible. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean, just value judgment wise, I will say altogether, it's 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 you know, it's a it's a very positive miracle, not just that it happened when it did but that it happened so close to the original vision. There was an incredible struggle of whether promises should be monadic. And the, the people who came from the monadic school who never tried to use, non, who never had experience using non-monadic promises and didn't understand the virtues, were just pushing so hard on monadic. And I even put on the table a compromise uh, to have two levels of semantics that had so you could have one level that was monadic and another level that wasn't. And Brendan fortunately talked, you know, talked us all out of that, saying, no, the committee should decide rather than do both. Um, OK, I have a uh, test. Well, let me well, I, uh, share my uh, share the screen here. What so so here is uh, an overridden den on a native promise. Um, so I override den, and the only thing I do is just like here, and then call the original one. The wait food doesn't trigger uh, the den. Promise resolve food doesn't trigger the den because it just short circuits and returns uh, foo right away. But here, if you do an adoption uh, through uh, the result functions, it will trigger the dot then. Okay. Over it and then. Okay. So because uh, the adoption uh, currently, the result functions do not test for um, if it's a native promise or not. Okay. And likewise, the, res the resolve function that the constructor passes to the executor will also show the here. We can. The, sorry, say again? Oh, yeah, yeah, same. Uh, uh, we use new, new, right. uh, new promise. New promise. Yeah. Uh, uh, resolve. And actually, let me uh, do it. with who? Yeah, OK. And uh, Good. resolve. Two yeah. log two. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, log two, and we all know ah, but that's or, or, or slash one. I would accept slash one. <laughs> Actually, this will not trigger uh, the here uh, because it only does it at then. So it would do one to uh, foo. But if we uh, replaced, um, let's see it. Uh, if we replaced it with a get. Uh, oh, indeed. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Got it. Anyway, right. um, you all got it, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, this was the one that counts. Yeah, worth it. Um, then and then value is this thing. Oh, get then uh, it would have to be, sorry, 
value. Wait, that's not a getter. Yeah, it's a, yeah, you have to change value to get. Oh, sorry. Not a value. Get. <laughs> uh, get. Yeah. The, so get then, uh, and then return or thing here, and then. So let's try that again. Uh, yeah, very good. Uh, uh, okay, very good. Uh, very good. Um, good show. Uh, and so await will not do that um, because it short circuits, right? Um, promise the uh, of um, who will not do that. However, uh, what we can do is uh, instead of the then, do it for constructor. Yeah. Uh, and we do. Uh, yeah, you're reusing the same foo object. You, you get you know, yeah. leave the, the, the then instrumentation is still there. So that's all good. Uh, and here we return uh, promise. Big key really. promise. Yeah. And uh, two. So promise result foo, we get the constructor. Await foo, we get the constructor because it triggers the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do this one, you do the whole shebang. <laughs> okay, it's not clear from that test that it got the constructor synchronously. Can you put? Um, right, so what you want here is a new console Actually, yeah. Uh, the way. Hmm. Um, how the hell do you do that? Um, I'm not sure how to show that. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, oh. It's the call. You, you create an asynchronous function that does the await, and then you. Um, uh, do something after in the caller after calling the asynchronous function because that will happen in the same turn as the turn in which you did the await, not on the assumption after the await. Um, okay, so async uh, await foo, I think. Foo, yep. uh, just console log here for no, 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 you have to, yeah, but just, just to know when we're out. Um, that will tell that that console log will happen after. Okay, right after a wait. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then right, and then click. Good. Yes. Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. So this is this is a very very compelling case for promises promise. Uh, let me mention some misgivings that I have, um, which mean, is, in general, we're trying to avoid. Uh, this was something that was brought up, you know, discussed extensively at the last TC thirty nine meeting. Um, uh, we're trying to avoid um, uh, built in functions that do. Checks, yeah. internal, in, internal slot checks, yep. including brand checks, but internal slot usage of any kind mm. on arguments other than the this argument. Yeah, I know. And the, and the reason is uh, practical membrane transparency. Yep. And the reason why array dot is array is not a counterexample is because is we made a, a proxy special case for it where if the proxy target is an array, that array.isArray on the proxy will say true. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure uh, nobody will uh, allow another one of those. Uh, so um, uh, that's probably true, but nevertheless, uh, we should still discuss whether we would want it. And I would argue in this case, we don't want it because um, oh wait a second maybe we do 
array dot, no, 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 we don't want it because the safety that you're assuming if that comes back true is not there because even though there's a promise as the target, anything you try to do with it will go through the handler. Yes. Um, so it would be bad to have promise dot is promise say true for a proxy. Uh, whereas saying true for a proxy for an array, for array is array, uh, there's no corresponding safety issue that I'm aware of. My understanding um, is that for all cases of a proxy or a promise where we are depending upon the Zenable protocol to save us, if I'm not mistaken. So right. the, you can always call that then, uh, and that will go through the proxy. Right. So the so the so the argument about practical so since promise dot resolve already works differently on a promise versus a proxy for promise. And it's and promise dot resolve is doing that already on an argument, not a you know a non this argument. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why we say that we still have practical membrane transparency. It falls back to the then protocol. Right. The the thenable absorption. So as long as people are not using promise dot is promise to avoid the venable absorption, um, then we then having a promise that is promise, the, the, well, promise that is promise itself won't be practically transparent, but the code patterns we expect to be using it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, whether that's a compelling argument, I don't know, but that would be some, that would so be a, an argument. The main argument currently against uh, a brand check is that it would be abused first to uh, do conditional awaits. Uh, people wouldn't understand that what they don't, mm. what they care about is a uh, denable check and not a um, not a is promised check. Um, I mean, might be able. I think Jack just suggested like to name this is native promise maybe. Uh, make it more obvious ah. uh, that it's not like a. Yeah, I I actually made that. I, I I actually put the feeler out for that. I'm I'm curious whether the commit whether the community is more amenable to a more Maybe specific it. name. Um, Jack was wondering about something else in response to that. Right. I didn't understand the question. Um, I longer longer names do discourage ca casual use. Yeah, um, um, a, a data point is that people are suggesting that if promise is promise existed, it would be abused. Yeah. I think that there's a counter to that, and that is that Q dot is promise has existed forever and hasn't been used at all, as far as I know. People, people really want to do conditional uh, weights. So. Yeah, and, and they're wrong, and we should steer them away from that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing I was, I started going down the path and then I uh, took a wrong turn, but I think there's still potential there. Uh, promise inherits from uh, the object constructor. So we could put a own two string on the promise prototype um, that does a brand check. It's kind uh, of like back ended way, but and it would solve the proxy transparency issue because it does a brand check on the this argument. Uh, I'm sorry, how, uh, I, I didn't understand this at all. So have a promise.prototype.toString that does a brand check before returning the toString tag. We and have taken what, advantage of that mechanism in other places. And, and um, so what do, what does it do on each side of the brand check? So promise the prototype that to string would do a branch do a check if this is a, an object. Uh, if it's an object, does a brand check uh, for uh, is promise, and then uh, if it is, 
it just returns the two string tag. If it uh, doesn't pass the branch check, um, I don't know what it, what should you do actually. That's a good question. I don't recall, but it does have to be definitive. It can't be like fall back to something else that could lie. Yeah, currently. Um... Well, the two string tag is just a mutable property. I mean, it's and it's it's and you're if you're fetching it with a get, it could be overridden on the individual promise object. So I don't understand how this helps. Yeah. And you're still doing a synchronous get uh, on two string tag. Right. Uh, correct. As well, or, as, well as a two string yeah. yeah. There was a trick. I don't remember the exact details of it, but we're doing a brand check, I think, on typed arrays using a technique oh. similar to this. Here, uh, if Where we capture the two string method early, or uh, I'd have to look. Right. So you could do return promise string without hitting two string tight if it's a promise the problem is that if you fall if it's not a promise you will still execute um yeah uh the two <sighs> yeah no never mind that yeah no we really need a clean uh we really need a clean brand check <laughs> with no strings attached <laughs> okay uh so i think i think this issue about I'm I sorry, you didn't hear my chortle, Matthew. Thank you. What chortled? You chortled. <laughs> no, no, no strings attached. Yeah. Well played. Oh, no strings attached. I'm sorry, I missed that. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So. So the pushback we're hearing right now is that um, this is a very niche use case. Uh, most people really shouldn't care about, really don't re, don't care about um, uh, synchronous interleaving there. And there is high potential for misabuse of this kind of API. And I'm not sure what to answer to that. So I care about the avoiding synchronous interleaving, mostly in the context of hardened JavaScript and Endo. Um, and, uh, and I would like to, and the extra tick suggestion that you mentioned for e.win would work, but is really expensive. Um, is there something that could that could plausibly work for hardened JavaScript for e dot for endo for e dot when, even if it doesn't work in unhardened JavaScript? And you know we have the advantage that promise dot prototype is frozen in its uh, primordial state. I looked at the paper and there is no way. I I, I tried to flip it in uh, in all directions and I, I couldn't find a way. Okay. Because anything will trigger uh, a get constructor or a get then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I mean, and the, the problem is that, it, as we've seen, even a wait will do. Uh, I mean, it's probably less dangerous because when you're a wait, like it's it's literally the last thing it will do. Well, it's the last thing it will do before returning to its caller, which is right. still on the same turn. Yeah, which you, uh, which you hope to, yeah. This is one of the things that is most scary about wait, is people think, as, as I think you just did, that it's the end of the turn. Yeah, but it's the caller that keeps on going. Right, right. The the, you're going to get all, you have everything above you on the call stack that still is yet to be done happens after the await. And I think, I think essentially nobody trying to think about atomicity of state change takes account of that. Uh, does that mean we need to rewrite all our await if we can't trust uh, what we're awaiting and wrap them into, uh, into an e.1 or something? Oh, geez. 
I mean, to be clear, my assumption about async functions from an early naive stance was that I had assumed that the body of an async function wouldn't execute at all from, would not begin to execute until a future turn. And so I wasn't worried about that kind of problem. That, uh, that was the original design, right? And then uh, that changed? I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, async functions were obviously introduced after promises and didn't come out of didn't come directly out of our work. It does come indirectly from you know, Dean's work on the Dory, but I don't well, think- it also it comes out of right, the, the q.async function that you wrote many years oh. ago built on the generator trampoline. Oh God, you're right. Yeah, and uh, the fact that the executor uh, is executed uh, synchronously of the promise constructor. And my understanding of q.async was that the generator wouldn't begin until the next turn. Um, and I had assumed that the syntax was the same, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where, why, where, where we diverged or why, but I got a hint of that from something you said a while back that you wanted to have a weight be the explicit delimiter and in its absence to not, uh, to, to not necessarily have a, an asynchronous delimiter, but uh, I don't know. So that would, that, that would, I mean, I could argue that both ways because it's the, the, the thing about marked interleaving points is for straight line code within a function. For the function as a whole, obviously it starts, you know, in, in general, it starts when it's called um, uh, and generators already don't start when they're called. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I, and I don't feel like I, when I say that all interleaving points are marked with yield or a weight, I don't feel like I need to make that further qualification on yield. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I've shown my screen. This is, uh, this is the trick that we're using to identify typed arrays with a brand check that depends upon the two string tag symbol, um, the behavior of the two string tag symbol, which we capture early and then apply to typed arrays. Wait, with, so for type array, two string tag is a, uh, it's a getter? Uh, evidently. Oh, that is the only case where uh, that is the case. Uh, so, I, I mean, Wait, that... You can still override it in on, an, on a typed array instance, no? But you if you capture the getter, you just call the getter. Oh! Um, yeah, uh, which which is what which is what I originally wanted, but then I realized that uh, I, I thought we did what? the trick somewhere, but I couldn't find in the spec anywhere where uh, two string tag was a getter, and I apparently missed the typed arrays. So where is that? So, what 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 my feeling is is that if we don't want people to use this, a technique like this, I think would be sufficiently obscure. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. But the problem is it, it would it would require uh, changing. Uh, to string tag from a value into a getter, uh, which mm -hmm. I'm happy to, uh, because that thing is probably not really cold, but I'm wondering if it would break someone. This is so bizarre. Okay, <laughs> so you're calling that on an array buffer. Where is this shared array buffer? Uh, the type, the typed array prototype, which I think is shared to. Uh, so, there, so there is no actual. Data view, oh, the data view prototype, uh, data view prototype arrays, data view. No, where is it? Where, where are the typed arrays? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm not showing my screen. Yeah. Um, as Alex pointed out, time is up. I have another meeting to head to myself. Right. Um, what was the other topic we were supposed to get to? Uh, Shadow Realm errors, uh, oh, right. Right. which next week, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, and I will also add to the agenda that I would love to um, understand. Uh, I had a, a harebrained notion at some point, probably while looking at grass waving in the wind, uh, that <laughs> that. Uh, at least some kinds of property override problems might be solved by doing a drastic and probably inadvisable measure of under cess 
removing uh, uh, under lockdown, removing all of the properties of the object prototype. Who needs them anyway? Um, Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'd love to hear next week about why that's a bad idea. <laughs> Re removing the properties of object prototype. Yeah, just cleaning out all of the properties of of object dot prototype. Who needs them anyway? And like, if you do need them, make them like functions on I, the object constructor. I, I hope you're joking. I'm not. I uh, I'm not. But that's only because I haven't thought it through, and I could use some help on that next week, maybe. <laughs> All right. Okay. With that, on that note, <laughs> having outed myself as a naive fool, um, I think that's a great place to stop. <laughs> Thank you. Yep.